In this video, I will prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is 1. This was probably my favorite proof in high school. When I learned it, it made me fall in love with math. I like it because it doesn't use anything advanced, it is just a clever use of high school geometry and trigonometry. I will begin by drawing some pictures to get some information about the function sine. I'm drawing the unit circle. This is a circle with radius 1, centered at the origin. Then I am drawing a radius that forms an angle x from the positive horizontal axis in the counterclockwise direction. I will call A the point where it intersects the circle, and I draw a vertical line from A that intersects the horizontal axis at B. Since the radius of the circle is 1, the coordinates of A are sine of x and cosine of x, or equivalently, the distance from A to B in red is sine of x, and the distance from O to B in green is cosine of x. This is true because the radius of the circle is 1. Actually, this is what I consider the best way to define sine and cosine, but perhaps you learn a different definition. In that case, if you need it, pause the video for a moment and persuade yourself that this is true by looking at the right triangle OAB. Next, I am drawing another vertical line from D, the rightmost point of the circle, to C, a point in the radius. In this picture, the distance between C and D in cyan is tangent of x. We know this by looking at the triangle OCD, because the distance from O to D is 1. Again, if you need it, pause the video for a moment and convince yourself. And this is all the trigonometry we will need. I will derive everything from here. Let me just keep this part of the picture. Next, I want to compare the areas of three different regions. The triangle OAB, the circle sector OAD, and the triangle OCD. Let's go through them one at a time. First, the smaller triangle OAB. Its area is base times height divided by 2. In this case, that is 1 half of cosine of x times sine of x. Next, let's look at the big triangle, OCD. Again, the area is 1 half of base times height. The base is 1, because the radius of the circle was 1, so the area is 1 half of 1 times tangent of x. Finally, let's look at the circle sector. Perhaps you know the formula for the area of a circle sector. In case you don't, here is how we can obtain it. I have drawn a sector with radius r and internal angle x. I want to calculate its area, which I will call s, for surface. I need one key observation. The area must be proportional to the angle. So the area s is some constant k, which I do not know yet, times the angle x. Here is y. If I double the angle, I could double the area, because it could be like having two copies of the sector. And more generally, if I multiply the angle by a factor, then the area will be multiplied by the same factor. This means that the area has to be directly proportional to the angle. How do I figure out the proportionality constant? Luckily, there is one specific sector whose area I know, the full circle. I can think of the full circle as a sector with angle 2 pi, and its area is pi r squared. Excellent! I can use this data point to compute the value of the constant k. pi r squared must be equal to k times 2 pi. From here I can solve for k. k equals pi r squared over 2 pi, or simplifying, 1 half of r squared. And now that I have a value for the proportionality constant k, I have my shiny new formula. The area of a circle sector is 1 half of the angle times the radius squared. Ok, back to the previous problem. I was trying to calculate the area of this circle sector OAD. I now know that it must be 1 half of the angle, which is x, times the radius squared, in this case 1. Good. I'll take it from here, from these inequalities, I no longer need the picture, and I will multiply everything by 2. So I have that cosine of x sine of x is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to tangent of x. And I can write tangent as sine over cosine. Let's not lose track of the objective. I am trying to conclude something about sine of x over x. Look at the first inequality. From it, 
I can conclude that sine of x over x is less than or equal to 1 over cosine of x. Now look at the second inequality. From it, I can conclude that sine of x over x is greater than or equal to cosine of x. All these manipulations are legal because I am just multiplying inequalities by positive numbers. Now I match both inequalities together to conclude that sine of x over x is sandwiched between cosine of x and 1 over cosine of x. Now, for which values of x is this true? x was in the first quadrant in the original picture, so x must be between 0 and pi over 2. x cannot be 0 because we have divided by x. But actually, the inequalities are also true for negative x. We can either repeat the same derivation with an angle in the fourth quadrant, and be careful with the negative quantities, but the final inequalities end up being the same. Or we can notice that the functions in the final inequalities are even, so they take the same value when you change x into minus x. Either way, we end up with the same result for negative x. So, after all this work, these inequalities are true when x is close to zero but not zero, and that is perfect to compute a limit as x approaches zero. And perhaps you already see what is coming. Here is the graph of cosine. It is nice and continuous at zero with value one. And here is the graph of one over cosine. It is also nice and continuous at zero with value one. Sine of x over x is not defined at zero, but everywhere else near zero, it is squeezed between the other two functions. Therefore, it must have limit one at zero as well. Or more formally, the limit of the two functions on the ends is one, so I use the squeeze theorem to conclude that the limit of the function in the middle is also one. That is what I wanted to prove. We are done.